Today we're going to talk about the first part of the digestive system. What we want to do is to understand the general organization of organs of the digestive system and to learn how these organs function to obtain nutrients metabolites necessary for growth and energy for the body yet maintain a barrier between the environment and the internal milieu of the body. The objectives are to understand the general organization of organs of the digestive system and how they function to obtain metabolites necessary for growth and energy for the body yet maintain a barrier between the environment and the internal milieu of the body. If you remember the three key steps on combating infection, one of them was to break the cycle of transmission. That is to have a physical barrier between your environment and you. And the digestive system is part of that first line of defense against infection with the hydrochloric acid that's produced in the stomach and the mucus in the intestines. Also, we want to identify uh, and describe the functions of cellular structures and cells and groups of cells in the digestive system. Now, the digestive system has three basic functions. One is to move food uh, from one location to another. So we expect to find smooth muscle in the digestive tract that will facilitate moving the food. Also, secretion of digestive juices. So, starting with the salivary gland, going all the way to the colon, uh, there will be digestive uh, juices or uh, juices produced uh, throughout the GI tract. Uh, also, with absorption of digested foods, water, uh, and electrolytes are uh, the third function of the digestive tract. Now, if you just look at a general uh, part of the tube of the digestive tract, you see that epithelial cells line the lumen where the food would be, and epithelial cells are on the other side too. These are actually mesothelium from the mesoderm. Mesothelium as opposed to the endoderm uh, in, in the case of the epithelium on the surface. There's also fibroblasts through there, and smooth muscles, a couple layers of smooth muscle. So uh, lining the lumen would be an epithelial sheath. Of course, at the junctions between the cells uh, allow you to have a, a sheet. Connective tissue below, circular layer on the inside of smooth muscle, along the two fibers uh, of smooth muscle on the outer side. This is a muscularis externa, connective tissue, and then another epithelial sheet that would uh, allow the intestine to slide along within uh, the uh, or uh, within the cavity of the body. If we look at a piece of tissue, we can see these two muscle layers, a longitudinal muscle on the outside, circular muscle on the inside, connective tissue, uh, and then uh, the mucosa, uh, the different parts with the connective tissue, uh, lamina propria, uh, and the uh, epithelium on the surface. If we look at it in more detail, we see there's surface uh, epithelium, as we just talked about, and surrounding those, below those, is lamina propria. Uh, and below that is a muscularis mucosa. These three things together make the mucosa. So there's a mucosa, and then there's a submucosa. So this is a submucosa, mostly uh, connective tissue. And then below that, we have the muscle layer inner circular muscle, outer longitudinal muscle, and then the very last part, we have the serosa. Serosa, which has a mesothelium uh, that uh, lines the outside of the gut. If we look at uh, a small intestine component, we can see the epithelium on the surface, simple columnar epithelium with absorptive cells and goblet cells is what we have. Uh, inside there, supporting the epithelium, is the lamina propria. And uh, below that is a muscularis mucosa. You can see the smooth muscle layers in through here. And below that is the, is the mucosa. Below the mucosa, 
we have a circular uh, smooth muscle, then a longitudinal smooth muscle, and then we have the serosa. Serosa, maybe a little connective tissue, and then the mesothelium lining, that is what we see. Now, if you look at the esophagus, earlier on in the uh, GI tube, you can see that uh, three things are different. Instead of having simple columnar, you have stratified squamous. And also the muscularis mucosa, instead of being continuous, is intermittent. Uh, also the serosa, instead of having a serosa, you have an advent tissue. The advent tissue is actually firmly attached to the outside as opposed to the serosa that will facilitate um, movement of it. You don't want the esophagus to move when you're swallowing food. So if we start with the oral cavity, here we see the tongue. There's various projections on the tongue. Some of those are fungiform. Some of them are filiform, uh, which are, are these guys here that have the uh, projections on it that actually uh, help you grip food and move food along. Uh, and then, of course, there's a lot of skeletal muscle uh, inside the tongue, tonsils at the back, uh, and we have another um, projection, which is the, um, uh, it's the uh, circumvalent papillae. The circumvalent papillae is kind of interesting because it had a little moat around it, and the serous glands secrete into that moat so you can wash out your french fries so now you can taste your hamburger and here we can see one of those here uh, this is uh, a sarcomvalent papillae uh, with the serous glands here the glands of ebner so they say that wash out the fluid uh, so you can taste the next thing and here we see taste buds these are taste buds here we can see a taste bud drawing of one where it opens out with a little pore and then it communicates with the nervous system. So uh, below the, uh, beyond the tongue would be the esophagus. And here we see the esophagus. It's got stratified squamous epithelium on the surface uh, is one of the things. It has a lamina propria below, connective tissue. It has a muscularis mucosa uh, there as well. It has a submucosa and have a muscularis uh, externa, the two different components, and the advent tissue. So that's what we'll see. So here we see the esophagus, uh, stratified squamous on the surface. On either case, this is in the proximal region and the distal region. And one thing you'll note is that the type of muscle is actually changing from the proximal to the distal region. We start out with mostly skeletal muscle uh, so we can have a, a reflex to uh, cough things up uh, also so we can initiate swallowing. So mostly smooth muscle. In contrast to the distal portions as you approach the stomach, you get more smooth muscle. Skeletal muscle versus smooth muscle is, um, is what we're seeing. Of course, along the way you have both. This is smooth muscle, but you have a larger amount of smooth muscle uh, as you go now, in contrast to a, a dog would have skeletal muscle throughout so they can regurgitate uh, to feed uh, their pups. So we come down from the esophagus with stratified squamous epithelium. Then all of a sudden we abruptly change from stratified squamous epithelium uh, to simple columnar uh, of the stomach. And so we're coming right into the, the cardiac region of the stomach and you have uh, like some mucus type glands here. So here is the cardioesophageal region. So this is esophagus coming through here and then a very abruptly changes. And so you have a surface, a flattened surface with little pits in through there, the gastric pits. And in the very first part of it, you have a mucus type secretion. So here we can see it, this mucus type secretion. We're in a cardiac region. And here you see the mucus type uh, component of secretion and the purpose of that mucus there is if you regurgitate something back and that's what heartburn is regurgitation of, of uh, acid into the esophagus uh, it will coat it uh, to minimize the damage uh, to the esophagus so in the first region in the cardiac stomach 
you have mucus. And then after that, you're going to pick up the fundic stomach uh, and the corpus of the body of the stomach where you have parietal cells. And these are the parietal cells, uh, very characteristic of these cells. You have a host of different cells. You have the surface mucus cells. So you've got a flattened surface with gastric pits is what we're seeing here. Uh, and then uh, you have the lamina propria, of course. And, and then you have the mucus neck cells. So what happens is you have the gastric pit coming in and then it branches. And at the branch, we have the neck cells, the mucus neck cells, parietal cells, and then the gastric glands, of course, would be parietal cells and chief cells, lamina propria, the chief cells, um, there's a smooth muscle of, of the muscularis mucosa as well as smooth muscle projects up uh, in the lamina propria uh, itself. So we have the mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa, and then we have the various cells uh, within them. So if we see a, 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 a piece of, of stomach, we can see the muscularis externa, uh, submucosa, and the mucosa. Uh, so what we have here, again, is a flattened surface with pits, holes in it. These look like villi, but these are not villi. You do not have villi in the stomach. You just have uh, pits uh, in the stomach with uh, the, the, the parietal cells uh, and the chief cells. You can have some lymphatic fluid as well. In the gastric gland, you have the base uh, where you have generation of cells. You have the isthmus and the neck region. Uh, the different portions of the gland, and then you have the surface, uh, surface mucus cells uh, that uh, protect the surface. So if you look in the fundic stomach, we see these big cells here. These are the parietal cells, in contrast to the chief cells. So parietal cells, chief cells uh, that produce pepsinogen versus hydrochloric acid. Now, if we uh, uh, stained the the stomach with PAS, we'll see that the surface mucus cells indeed have mucus on them. That's what we see here. And then the mucus neck cells in the isthmus region right in through there, the neck cells also have mucus. So mucus neck cells are the names of those cells. So if you come on down uh, to the stomach, we can see surface mucus cells uh, and then the gastric pits in here which are branched uh, branched tubular glands. So we can see the surface mucus cells, you see the mucus components on the surface, you see parietal cells in through here. These are parietal cells with a lot of mitochondria in through there and you can see uh, a lighter space in there. We'll learn that that is the secretory canaliculus uh, later on. A higher mag of these uh, surface mucus cells, electron microscopic view, we can see these are, sim these are simple columnar cells with mucus secretions at the surface. And we see those mucus secretions at the light microscopic level here with our tolude and blue. So these guys are different from those. Parietal cells, these other cells are the chief cells. But you see a nice big parietal cells in through their surface mucus cells uh, here. And if you go on down a little deeper, you'll get uh, into the gastric pit, you'll get the parietal cell. So here we see nice parietal cells. This is a parietal cell electron microscopic view showing you uh, the host of mitochondria <laughs> that uh, are in there for producing uh, energy to be able to, uh, to uh, pump chloride and uh, hydrogen ions uh, into the secretory canaliculus. And a secretory canaliculus is the projection of the lumen down deep uh, within uh, the parietal cell itself. So, so the, the, the opening here, the lumen, is continuous with the secretion. Here we see a, soup, a mucus neck cell, so it was mucus uh, as well. So uh, we see the parietal cells uh, and the, the chief cells. And one thing about a parietal cell is it produces uh, hydrochloric acid. Interesting enough, it also produces bicarbonate. Bicarbonate uh, can be used um, to to help dampen the effect uh, of the hydrochloric acid 
uh, on the stomach itself. Uh, also, another thing um, the parietal cells produce is intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor for vitamin B12 absorption by the gut is needed uh, to form red blood cells. So intrinsic factor uh, stimulates red blood cell uh, production is important uh, in red cell, blood cell production. So if we, in addition to the parietal cells, we see the chief cells. Here's the chief cells that produce pepsinogen. So you can see these large chief cells, lots of rough endoplasmic reticulum that we see in there and these big droplets. These are secretory droplets, zymogen granules that we see here ultimately be released uh, as uh, pepsinogen. Now in addition to the parietal cells and the chief cells, uh, here we see the parietal cells and the chief cells. You can see the mitochondria in the parietal cell very nicely there. There's also these other cells which are the argentivan cells, uh, endoendocrine cells, and we can see one uh, here another, another one. These dark granules at the base of a cell. And we can see those. These are argentivan cells with different types. There are different types of these and there are different uh, types of granules that they secrete. These are endocrine cells that produces hormones that is dumped out into the lamina propria. So it goes into the bloodstream, not into the secretion. So you have an exocrine function with glands and you have an endocrine function uh, in, the, in the stomach as you see. There's another one showing you uh, one of those uh, argentivan cells uh, in a sea uh, of, of uh, chief cells. We can also see smooth muscle running through there uh, as well. So if you go through the fundic stomach, now you're in the pleuric region. Uh, again, in the pleuric region, there is a mucus secretion here to help uh, uh, lower the pH or, or, or prevent digestion of the duodenum uh, from the uh, components that are uh, acid within the stomach. And uh, here you have the surface mucus cells. Also, you see that the, the, the gastric glands themselves are of a mucus type, uh, as indicated by the PS staining uh, that, we, that we see there. So you're coming from the uh, pleuris region with the uh, pleuris mucus type uh, glands that are at the very end. Uh, parietal cells are back further. Uh, and then you go from the flattened surface with gastric pits to villi. So now you're having projections of villi, intestinal villi. In fact, you could say the intestinal villi are the small intestinal villi because you don't have intestinal villi in the large intestine either. So villi are only in the small intestines. Also, we have the pleuric sphincter here, which is very important in uh, regulating uh, the amount of food stuff uh, that goes into the duodenum. One uh, component of a duodenum is it has uh, these glands, duodenal glands, we call them Brunner's glands, and this secretion uh, helps to uh, bring down the pH, uh, to raise the pH, I should say, uh, from, from the stomach. So here we can see the junction between the pleuric region of the stomach and the duodenum. Right in through here, start out with gastric pits and then we, we start the projections of glands. Next time we will continue with the intestines.